Hello and welcome to the series finale of The Tech Files. It's very, very sad. But, in brighter news, they finished my statue. And these are the chippings from it. That bit there came off of my crotch and you notice it's tiny. They're unveiling it at the end of the episode in a stroke of synchronicity. You couldn't make this kind of timing up. But first things first, we have a doozy of an episode as we explore the mystery of how the airwalk lost its kick. So as with many tricks in this series, the airwalk was invented by Rodney Mullen, freestyle virtuoso and all round... Oh, but what's this? Well, according to this airmail, the airwalk was in fact invented by Tony Hawk. That seems very unlikely to me. Vert Rider influencing a freestyler. No wonder freestyle died in the 80s. Away with you. So the airwalk was a flamboyant ramp move made even more flamboyant once taken to its spiritual home on the flat. It involved kicking the board into your front hand and then kicking out both your legs in a sleek, deadly scissor style kick. This was a trick that suited the show-off antics of the 80s crew down to the ground, as it was like a dance from fame, but with wheels. Kicks got more flamboyant and overstyling it was a must. The airwalk motto was kick hard and kick wild, and try and get that board vertical and style it out to the max. Do people still talk like that? I don't know. <laughs> so this was a move that epitomised the 80s. But as usual, they took it to... Ah, ah. Two very prominent airwalkers were Mike V and Frankie Hill, who became locked in an unspoken airwalk battle one day. Frankie had pulled ahead in the airwalk popularity polls, and Mike was encouraged by Tony Alva to... Sweep the leg. ...to regain the top spot. Fight. And with one wild airwalk kick, he took out Frankie's knee, bringing about a permanent end to his career. After this, the skate industry got together and had one of their secret meetings, banning the airwalk under the Dangerous Trick Act of 1973. It joined other banned tricks such as the Pitbull Terrier and the Air Rifle. A few people flouted the law, but the airwalk wasn't seen much until the law was relaxed in 1999 to allow the airwalk back into circulation, but with a kick restriction of three inches. Now this kick restricted airwalk really didn't have the same va va voom of the 80s airwalk, and even done down the biggest gap it still lacked that certain je ne sais quoi. After skaters complained that the lack of kick was no different to enforcing everyone to do a rocket kick flip, the Skate Council saw sense and relaxed the kick restriction. Slowly, the airwalk kick is now coming back, as skaters realise they are now allowed to express themselves via leg kicking as much as they like once more. Now we know this isn't going to happen overnight, so we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to learn one of the airwalk's lesser known variations, the scarewalk. So the scarewalk, as the name suggests, is related to the airwalk. It's a little different, you grab with the back hand and you kick it out aggressively, more like garden shears than scissors. No one knows who invented the scarewalk, but Ron Allen claims it came to him in a dream at Super Skate Camp. That's refuted by Rodney Mullen though. He took him to the court of skate arbitration and won. He just keeps collecting these trick credits. He doesn't even need them. Setting up for a scare walk, shuffling your front foot to a semi kickflipish position and your back foot on its toes ready to pop. Then you're halfway there already. So when you pop the board, instead of sliding your foot up as you would with an ollie or a kickflip, you want to relax it and kick it off to the side. The actual pop in itself is very similar to when you ride down the street and you pop your board into your hand like a cool guy marching into the shops. So unlike its cousin the airwalk, the scarewalk is grabbed with your back hand. You want to kick your front foot way in front of you, kind of like a Ron Allen style Ollie North or one foot for people of a certain age. And the back foot going way back behind you, like one of those really fashionable 360 flips. 
While you're airborne and working on your 80s facials, hopefully by now you're in a classic stylish scarewalk position and it's time to land. Just push your fingers and your palm a little bit forward and it aims the board back to the ground. Perfect position for landing. Right away clean, go pick out your favourite rom-com and give it a watch. Maybe something starring Hugh Grant. So that was the scare walk, and now the part of the show we've all been waiting for, especially me, the arrival of my statue. And here it comes. Wait a minute, that's clearly not me. It's freestyle poet Daniel Gesmer. Talk about an anti-climax. I'm so, ugh, so angry. But it's so beautiful, I can't, I can't keep my eyes off it. Well, I suppose that's it for the series. We might be back, we might not. If you need me, bury a potato in the usual spot. Dave Coyne was a rare Sal finger flip double agent. He managed to sneak in a few finger flips. Because it's a raw skate video. The kind that we grew up watching going, yep.